Hmm? No, no, but now that you mention that, today is the list off. Um, it's at 2.30 and it's in front of Jim, James, all the big guys. So I think it's six agents that have made it to the list off um, today. Yeah, I believe so. In the wrong one, probably. My clock and my my computer clock and my phone and watch are different times. How could that be if they're all internet based? Can someone answer that? Shouldn't everything be the same? Good morning. No, do they do they listen? Well, remember, <laughs> everybody gets a gold star for reading my email here. <laughs> but it's also spring break, so half the schools are off this week and half the schools are off next week. So next two weeks are going to be like just in general in the world. I have my manager's meeting tomorrow. Fiddler's elbow couldn't do Thursday this week this month, so they had to switch to Wednesday and. So that's why. Do you always have a calendar? Always on, yes. It's every once a month on a Thursday, but yes, it's always there because it's a central location. Because Joe's region now consists of now Old Bridge, Edison, Metuchen, you know, I forgot where Josephine Edwards is, but like in Warren. So that's like a central place. Um, so it's so funny. I was walking to get the breakfast sandwiches this morning. And I don't know why this occurred to me, but. I remember coming here, right, when I was in the Randolph office. Dominic Rivetti used to have his regional meeting sales rallies here every once a year or once every two years. I remember coming here like I was in, like, it was like the best place to be. Like, oh my God, I'm in corporate headquarters. This is so awesome. And like, this is the feeling I got coming up here. It's so, I was just <laughs> thinking about that. Isn't that so funny? Still it's still that way. Every day I walk in and I say, oh my God, I'm so lucky to be here. <laughs> right, Silvana? <laughs> well, no, true. It's, listen. One of our, well, no, I mean, people have that. Oh my God. <laughs> He looks good. Ben um, has a picture of Dominic. That, what was this? Let, let me guess. Uh, ah! <laughs> Vin is a, well, everybody knows Vin on social media, right? But every time Vin goes to JR's, Joanna, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It was probably the first Linda saw Dominic ready. Linda always sees somebody. Oh my God. I love him. I love him. When I saw him. Hey Jamie. Hey Jamie. Everybody recognize David from my picture next to him on my sign? Hey <laughs> um, oh. Joey. Yeah, well, I do it for recording. But how did you hear it? I have to cancel that. I thought I did. That's why I sent that on Friday. Got it. Got it. Cancel it now. <laughs> That's Catherine. So every time, so every time, uh, every time Finn goes to JR's, right? He, uh, he, he, he always has a photo of someone with someone famous, like a football player or somebody. So he just showed me a picture of Dominic Ravetti that he has when he went to JR's last week. Since I brought it, since I brought it up. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. It's getting ten o three. We've been infiltrated again. I just don't know how to get this all done. So anyway, good morning, guys. Um, here's my thing. So it's, it, do you believe it's the, the middle of April already? It's the middle of April. Easter Sunday, Passover, Good Friday, everything is right ahead of us. Um, and, April, and Easter is late because usually it's in March, right, in the past. So it's, it feels like it's late, but we're already in the middle of April. So... Um, Time is moving really, really quick. We can't keep hold of time this year for some reason. I'm not sure why. So one small positive thought can change your whole day. The reason I chose this was most of you have seen if you are on social media that I ran a 5K this weekend. Um, it was actually a little different because it was at seven o'clock at night. Everybody knows me. I'm a morning person. I get up, I exercise, I eat, I'm done for the day. So this was a seven o'clock uh, uh, run and it was, there was 550 participants. It was huge. And um, it was my sister, my brother-in-law, my husband, everybody did it. So, um, so we had a good time, but I realized something. Last year, the same week, I did a 10 miler. So that was a tough, tough race. That was like a hard, for me, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done, running 10 miles. And, um, this week, this year, doing it three miles, by the end of my three miles, I was like, <sighs> right, I couldn't, I was like, how would I have gone another additional seven miles? I don't know how I would have done it. So I thought about that and I said, you know what? It's not my ability to run. I could have run seven miles because I work out every day and, you know, my ability, you know, my conditioning, my mindset was not a 10 mile run. It was a three mile run. So it's so, our lives are so much, our daily activities, everything we do are so much, has, has, so much of that has to do with our mindset. Because I was not prepared in my mind, not in my body, I could not have done a 10 mile inch. So think about that in your daily activities and your abilities to be whatever producer you want to be and to attain whatever goals you want to attain. If you have the right mindset, you can do it. If you have the wrong mindset, you're never going to do it. It's going to stop you no matter what activities you're doing every day. So I just thought that was really important to share with everybody. Um, so open houses, um, you know, open houses are so scarce. I remember when I um, was active in real estate and I was, a, I was, a, I did a lot of listings. I was a listing agent and the stress week to week to get my open houses covered because our homes did not sell in three days or three minutes like they do today was one of the was one of my biggest hardships in real estate because I can only do one and I had to get other ones covered and then there were so many open houses then that people you know you didn't have as many agents who weren't doing them who were free to, to do it as you do now so now we have a great opportunity to do open houses or we have you know we don't have to worry as a listing agent how many we know over the weekend it's going to be gone right. So you have to make an experience. I know a lot of people do that. Tabitha does an amazing job with hers. Cheryl does an amazing job with hers. If you see pictures of what they put out and how they um, set up 
so to say, their uh, open house, which is really amazing, right? So it sets an experience for the clients that come in. So again, making sure that you are um, taking hold of it. <laughs> that might be a good idea. We, we could do anything at this point, right? We're in control when it comes to that. I don't know. We have to look in the real estate commission. I would say yes, but I, that, that's not the real estate commission's uh, ruling. I don't think we could charge anybody for anything. I think you could ask for it, and if they give it, yes, but you can't not allow them in if they don't. I guess is the, is the proper answer. So, <laughs> now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. I love that. So anyway, I wanted to give you an idea. So the protection uh, Edison office has started something because what's happening is, and it's happening in our office as well, listing agents don't want to give up the opportunity to do their own houses, right? Um, so even if we have open house opportunities, people are sort of holding them in to, to themselves. We have to open it up. We have so many agents that want to do open houses right now. We have so many opportunities to fill them. So what they started doing was, and, and the other thing is, which you guys say to me every day, but you guys do it as well, is you're like, could you believe this house just went on Friday and you're asking for highest and best on Monday by 12? Like, it's ridiculous. This is too quick, right? Everything's moving too, too quickly. So what he did this past two weekends, which he had a lot of success was, and that's John Jaramillo, the manager over there, is he had his open houses sat Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 11 to 5. But you know what the discouraging thing is that you have the open house, sorry, you're wrong. You have the open house, but the private agent is sending your clients to the open house unattended, and you feel like you're just a door open. I mean, so that's, that's very discouraging. I agree with you, but I don't think that's any different than it was in the past. I mean, I did open houses well, no, 10 years ago. Started. Oh, got you, got you. Yes, yes, yes. But I feel like even if you have 10 or 12, like we used in the past, which would have been a good, a great open house, when you have that, 10 of them would have been, would have been, but I understand, yes, because you want to be making, building relationships with other people, you just don't have the time. So um, he did Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in shifts. So agents pick shifts. Obviously, we're not asking someone to sit there eight hours, but um, or however, six hours, whatever the uh, amount of hours is, but we do the two hours in increments, three hour increments, and they were filled all day long. They had a lot of opportunities. A lot more people came through during the day. A lot more agents got the opportunity to do open houses. A lot newer agents got to shadow more agents doing open houses. So it was a win-win for the whole office, basically. So I just think that that's a really great idea. Asking your clients to be out these three days. We're going to get all of your showings in at that, that time. You're going to have agents there. And, you know, hopefully you get an opportunity because you just need that one to come in without an agent to, to you know, get, get some business, right? So I just think it's a good idea and I think it's worth, worth talking about or worth um, trying out. So, so this week is a, every month they're doing a um, Weikert experience. And so this, I mean, not week, month. So this month is, is historical day. So here they have a resource for you that you could do a market design center and you can put together some of the historical uh, pieces of that uh, town and have them out to set yourself apart. Again, it's a really nice piece. You just have to get some information and how easy is it to get information these days? Google historical sites in Long Valley or historical information about Marstown. It'll all come up. You put it in there, you print it out and you have a beautiful piece. So I think it's really, uh, I think it's nice and it will set you apart. So that's the Market Design Center. Seize your opportunity by planning multiple open house splits events this week. And again, it's always nice to decorate your table. It's always nice to share treats. Um, Cheryl has something that she put together with peeps and she put a big um, egg over it, a yellow egg. And it says, uh, send me your peeps, yep. And, and, and people are grabbing them at open houses. They're grabbing them and taking them home with them, right? So that's a really cute idea. So there's a lot of cute ideas. We can work with you on doing that, but just make it more of an experience. Um, and just remember open houses are really the key to our business. They've, it's been forever and it hasn't changed. Open houses are the best way for agents to meet 
uh, people face to face and for new agents to get their first piece of business. So here again, April of before, looking back with some of that historical information on it, um, your QR code, which is huge. And again, this is already, um, this invitation is on uh, Wegger Design Center. So it has all your information. And this is just a, a, a good news or daily dose of good news story. And this was in Overston Township. She said two open houses that are new listing when, when it hit the market after being exclusive. She had a total of 37 people through during the weekend, more than five offers, all over asking, one being all from the open house. So again, a lot of people, I know a lot of agents are getting opportunities to open houses because I have conversations with them and I'm sitting in and, and being one of the people who are helping them with the offers, um, you know, because it's supposed to agency. So just remember, it is a great way. We have to get more of them um, than we can. So Jamie, come on up. You can't see my screen, but you're on it. <sighs> Our little fairy girl. <sighs> so everybody knows Jamie McMahon. So much. Uh, Thank you so much for having me to your meeting. I think this is my first time in this room. Usually we're in the other. Yeah, room. since COVID and since we opened it up to in-person meetings yeah. only to give people more room to spread out. Yes. Yeah, we have we have the opportunity of having it here, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so my name is Jamie. I think most, most of you know me. My office is in Rockaway. I do um, exclusively residential real estate. Um, obviously quite familiar with this crazy market right now and all the stress that it brings. And I you know I've said before and I'll say it again, I think I've been I've been doing this almost 20 years. I think it's one of the more one of the most stressful markets that I've encountered. Everyone's stressed, the seller's stressed, the buyers are stressed. It's a very stressful market. And you know, I know when I've been here before, some of the things that I've touched upon that I'll just say again that I think are very important are just setting realistic expectations for everyone in the transaction because I think that's a lot of times where people's um, frustration and upsetness comes with. And just remembering, you know, the, the compassion and the courtesy component of it because it's very easy to get stressed and, you know, let our frustration out. It's very, very important to, you know, treat everyone as you would want to be treated and make sure that you're effectively communicating. You know, when you have open communication and everyone understands the lays are going to be inevitable and there's going to be bumps on the road in almost every transaction. But I, I feel that the open communication and the effective communication are just really, really important to keeping things as smooth as possible. The, the buyers are obviously all wrecked that there's going to be another offer. The sellers are going to somehow you know, walk away even after we're out of attorney review. A lot of the sellers are worried. The buyers are going to change their mind because they did so much over asking price. So everyone wants to you know, hurry it up, hurry it up. But you know, there's just so many things that you know come up from appraisers wanting to come back and you know uh, septic issues like we had money in our deal. And you know, I've had a lot of title issues. I just had a deal um, where White Bear Title actually helped out. There's no agents on this transaction. I represent a seller. He bought the house in '99. He's selling it now, and he didn't have his title policy. There was a prior open mortgage. We were able to track it down. It was through White Bear Title, and it wasn't enough to resolve the issue. This prior owner's mortgage was never discharged. It was paid off, but it was never discharged. So it was someone I never represented. This guy, I didn't even represent him in 99 when he bought the house. I was still in law school, but we had to go through tracking down the mortgage, getting the discharge, getting it. Um, so it's delayed the closing a lot. And you know, everyone's frustrated, but sometimes you know things like that happen. You have to keep the communication open and you know just make everyone understand that you do want to close, but these issues do come up and they have to be resolved. Another big problem I'm seeing right now, as I'm sure you are also, are you know any delays lead to complete panic with the rate blocks because the rates are going up. So that's definitely been you know an added source of frustration and stress for a lot of buyers in the transaction. So it's it's a really it's a really stressful market right now. You just need to you know keep moving forward, have a smile on your face every day and do the best you can. I think a lot of it is mindset. As Missy said, I completely believe in that. You have to make sure that, you know, you're doing everything you can and everyone knows that they can come to you if there's an issue. Does anyone have anything specific that they would like me to address or any questions? For me? Wow, guys, you must be all beaten down. <laughs> You're like, you've thrown in the white flag and you can do no more. 
Okay. Well, <laughs> if anything comes up, as I always say, I'm always available. You can call or email me. I'm always happy to talk, even if I'm not involved in the transaction. I'm always happy to give an opinion or if you want about something off me. It's my pleasure. Yes. Do you want to sell your <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. No, I'm, I'm too busy getting my kids through school. Right now. <laughs> She can give you the most money now than you'll ever get, yeah. Jamie. Yeah, we no. guarantee you. I know. Yeah. I, I can't believe some of what I see. You know how much of work was priced and how many offers were. I mean, I see it. Like I, I, I do a double or triple take. I, it's really mind-boggling to me. Um, so I, I, I get it. Believe me, I get it. I've had a, a lot of, a lot of crying lately, a lot of yelling. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really, really stressed mm -hmm. out. So I completely get it. So work out every day. Drink your coffee <laughs> or wine coffee or wine yeah i'm not a fan of my magic coffee a lot of coffee a lot of coffee a lot of ice cream <laughs> okay well thank you very much i hope everyone has a good day thanks jamie thank thanks you. Thank you. so with that we have anthony who is actually uh visiting us remotely today because he had something going on. Let me see. Make sure my volume's up because I turn it down. Oh, it's way up. Anthony, are you there? I can't hear. Oops, now I messed up everything. Ashley, text Anthony and see if he's on and let me know. Uh, thank you. All right, we'll move on. We'll come back. Where did I put my thing? Oh, here it is. Mm, I always lose it. Don't don't look at the questions, guys. Uh, okay, so market absorption rate is one month, right? In most areas, we both we all know that, right? Homes are going off the market so quickly. Um, the amount of homes that are on the market in some towns are less than what's went under contract in the past 30 days or equal to, which is amazing, right? If you've been in the market a long time, someone was asking Catherine how long she's been in 2005. Anybody been in prior to 2005? Eric, you've been in since when? 2000. 2000. Lanny. I started in Chicago. Oh, right, right. 98. Right. So have you ever seen a market like this in your career in real estate no um but that's right one of the things we love about real estate is it's never the same day right it's always something different we always have challenges we always have obstacles every every day is different and we're always there helping people and this too will pass and there'll be a new challenge that we have to deal with. there's always going to be a challenge right it's always going to be a challenge so buyer demand remains strong fueled by historic low interest rates Rates starting to climb, increasing urgency, strong employment. A lot of investors are out there still buying up homes. Desire for more space, flexibility to move further from work from the pandemic. Millennial, oh, okay. Millennial population surge. Listings will continue to sell with multiple offers in one day if you let them, right? So we have to hold it back a little bit, but don't let them. You sell yourself short and the seller may not get the best buyer. Buyers will gravitate to realtors who, in, who with inventory longer on the market, meet more buyers and sellers, and sellers will consider selling if they see inventory on the market longer, right? Because some people don't want to have that happen in five seconds flat. They need to process it. They need to go through the process like they used to. And I'm not saying month. I'm saying maybe a week, you know, five days, but doing it so that they're getting the most exposure possible and the best advantage in this market. So new listings by county. So year over year from 2021 to 2022. And this is obviously as of March because April's numbers, we're just in April right now. So if you see in Morris County, we're down 20.8% uh, in listings year over year. So last year at this time, we had 794. Now we have 629. So it's not as depressing as you would think it was, right? I mean, the numbers aren't that crazy off. Um, Warren County is down 27 and a half percent. Sussex County is down 20.7. So we're all down around the same amount when it comes down to, um, 
uh, deficit of homes on the market year over year. Oh, Sussex is seven. You're right. I'm sorry. Somerset was 20. Yes. Sussex is only down 7%. And Middlesex is down 8 Those are the, the two lowest um, in New Jersey. Yeah. So altogether, 17.9% in a whole in New Jersey, uh, new listings down year over year. Um, so here is actually the first one was February. This one was March. So I apologize. This one is March's dates. Um, so 2020 to 2022. Okay. So this is a two year. And in two years, Morris County is down 36 and a half percent. Two years from 2020 to 2022. Now remember 2020 after I'm going to say the latter part of 2020 in the fall, we were telling people then, oh my God, sell your house. We're never going to see numbers like this before. Literally, we thought we were at the top of the market then that we were never going to see those numbers. And a lot of people sold. And then a year later, their home sold for $100,000 more. I mean, it's just incredible. So we weren't at the top of the market then. We didn't know. It was all new to us. We, we, we did not expect to come out of COVID um, as busy as we were. And a lot of us felt guilty that we, our, our uh, profession was doing so well when, and we felt like everybody else was struggling so much, right? It was just a really strange, strange time. And now we're saying, okay, here we are in this market. And we're in a really, really, really strange time. So in total, New Jersey's down in two years, 34.2% in listings. Um, and then absorption rate. So the absorption rate in total of New Jersey is 0.9% or 0.9 months, I'm sorry. So just under one month. And Morris is 0.70 months, right? So 0.7, so it's less than one month. Um, which we've seen throughout Morris County. Warren is down. I mean, every everybody is within one month's absorption rate. Again, I got into the business in 2006 and we, we learned absorption rates then too. And absorption rates then were 10, 12 months in 2006. Even though that was a great market, right? That was a great market. Homes were flying off the market at that time too. But there was, the difference was there was tons of inventory. So you priced your home right, it was going right away. You literally had to sit in front of your car. Like you pulled up with your client. You said, well, how does this look? They said, great, let's write up an offer right now. Like that's how quickly homes were going too, but the inventory was there. That's what the difference is from then to now. So here's an absorption uh, scale. Um, and this is something I used throughout my career. Whenever I went to go to, on a listing appointment, I would always do the absorption rate for that town and I would show them the scale so they knew exactly where they were and what the absorption rate meant which I would say simply put means if there were no other homes to come on the market, it would take one month to sell your home. Now, back then I was saying 10 months or five months or six months. I was not saying one month. I never thought I'd see that, but uh, they'd have a better idea and, and would set up the expectations for how long it would take for them to sell their house. Yes. Yes, I do. I do. Because I, I probably still have in my in my my absorption rate folder because I used to I wouldn't go over it I would save it and then so like a year later I can say this is what was going on last year this year we're a little better or vice versa and I would, I would be able to share those stats with my clients so yes it was just incredible that's what I'm saying you'd go on expecting to be doing open houses for the next year of your life in that house and not only you you have to get other people to sit it and then it would get stale right there was all these things going on that you had to deal with um those challenges then, getting buyers off the fence then. We used to have meeting after meeting of how do you get your buyers off the fence? That's not a problem now, right? For sure. So um, this is uh, predicting the direction of home values is something that we've had again, since my time in, in uh, actively doing real estate, that still is um, a great resource for today and sharing with your clients what's going on in the market. So we shared the available market a few, I guess it was a few weeks ago in the meeting. So there's a tremendous opportunity to gain more of the available market. And what does one, two, or 3% increase in market share mean to us? Oh, sorry. If I don't feel it, I don't know it. <laughs> it was not blinding me. So available market. Um, so in January, February, and March, there were, we had, we took, 
Weikert took part of, and that's our region only, 978, 970 listings or sales, I shouldn't say that, transactions, listing and sales sides. And closed unit in the MLS were 8,177. So there's a lot of opportunities. What we're saying is, you feel if, if I was to ask you if there was any available, did you miss any available market in the last three months? You would say, no, there was nothing out there. There was no opportunities. That's That green is the opportunities that we did not get, get to take advantage of. Okay, so there's a big piece of the pie. There's a lot of opportunities out there. So we don't live in a world of scarcity. We don't, there's a lot of business out there that we're just not taking advantage of. Why is that? Maybe they have different relationships. I don't know, but there's a lot of opportunities that we can still take, that we can still get moving forward in the market. So I want you to look at this as like, how do I get a piece of that pie? How do I get more listings? How do I get more opportunities? Because that's the available market right there. We're just a slice of that pie as a region. There's a lot of business out there to still get. So again, changing your mindset. This is part of changing your mindset, not thinking that there's not any business out there, thinking, how do I get, in, how do I get the business that's out there that I did not get a, a piece of in the last three months? So existing home sales, again, if you look at existing home sales for 2021, we, it, it's the highest since 2007. So we really did a lot of business last year. So even though, again, it doesn't feel like, I know we don't have the, uh, the same opportunities and it's harder to get our buyers into a house because there's so much um, competition, but we still have one of the best years ever in real estate. And this is national, nationwide, okay? This isn't just our market or our area or our region. This is nationwide. We had one of the best years since 2007. So that's 15 years, 15 years or six, I guess 14 years because it was 2021. So again, there was a lot, there's a lot of business to still go around, guys. Don't shut your mind off and say the business isn't out there and think that that's why you're not having, you know, successful. It's out there. It's out there. It's just how we, we have to find different ways to get it. We have to pivot. We have to change. And we have to make sure that we take advantage of all the available opportunities that are out there. So some office updates. Last week, there was a top producer event. Um, so what Weikert wanted to do is, you know, with COVID going on the last few years, it's been hard to get agents together and to recognize those who have achieved certain levels in our uh, in our uh, company. So it was for anyone who achieved um, chairman of the board, president's club or ambassador's club. And so we had 10 agents in our office who qualified for it. So congratulations to the following agents. It was Mara Glauber, Brenda and Peter Lee, Michael and Priscilla Elms, Kim Brechka, Gloria LaForgia, Cheryl Towie, Catherine Adcock, and Vin Dutwani. So, <laughs> Vin's clapping it. Vin and Catherine are clapping for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> as you should, as you should. So, um, it was at Fiddler's Elbow. It was a nice, he had a short little meeting, and then it was just cocktails and socializing, and it was with the region. So, there was different agents um, within there. And I like to mention this because the reason why, when I was sitting um, in a sales meeting, and if my manager brought this up, I was thinking to myself, how am I getting there next year? How am I getting to the next one? How am I getting to the next one? That was always my thing. I'm the type of person as you, you dangle that little carrot and I'm biting. I'm biting all the time. What so, uh, <laughs> that would have been a great question if I had that out, had it in front of me. I know, I know chairman of the board was 20 million. Um, I believe, um, but I will get you the exact numbers because that would make sense. Uh, uh, President's Club was 15 million. It's dollar volume, it's dollar volume. And um, Ambassador's Club is, I believe, 10 or 12 million, but I'll find those numbers out for you exactly. So, and they want to do more of these each year. So it's not going to be a once a year thing. They want to do it multiple times a year to get agents together because they felt like it really helped the agents talk to other agents, get information. Like it was just a nice opportunity for agents um, to mingle and get together and sort of let their hair down. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's million dollar club, directors club, executive club. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's some of the pictures. So not everybody was able to make it last week. 
um, again, because of first and foremost, because of um, uh, spring break. Some people had already left for spring break. Some people weren't feeling well. Catherine called me at 12 o'clock on the day of, sounded horrible, horrific. And she said, I'm gonna come for a little while to support you. And I said, Catherine, if, you, if I felt like you sounded, I would be in bed. It was a horrible day. It was like the rainiest day of the, of the month. I was like, I appreciate that, but you need to go to bed. She said, okay, thank you. And she, <laughs> that was that. <laughs> that was basically our conversation. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was a nice event and I would hope to have more people there in the future because it's just something, you know, nice to get out there and mingle and hang out and uh, talk to all different agents or see people. From the minute we walk, I walked in with Vin, just want you to know. So I walk in with Vin, first thing that happens is there's these three agents sitting there on the bench. I don't know who they are. Vin. I know you from social media. And that was the theme throughout the rest of the day. Every, we took three steps. Oh my God, Ben, I know you from three steps more. Ben, I know you from social media. People, it was like, he was a celebrity. People were coming up to us in line. Ben, I love your stuff. Ben, you do literally, right, Ben? He was like a celebrity. Everybody came to us like for, for the whole time. They want to shake his hand, his autograph, like, <laughs> oh, Ben. <laughs> that is the truth so um, office news so just something to remember that yesterday yesterday fair housing celebrated its 54th year you guys i signed up for i'm sorry i signed up for three class okay two credit mm -hmm. and one housing from oh. anybody else don't do it Wait, you did it this when it Oh, it happened this week, you mean? No, I signed up. Like, when, when is it? When is the class? Sometimes it's Like, this week, what I'm saying, you know, all she cares is what she has. No, all I care is that she's free. She's free, she's getting her fair housing. Did you know this? No, one. One fair housing, two ethics. It's in the two for ethics. And those are the hardest ones, guys. Fair housing and, and, and ethics are the hardest ones to get for free. So yes, please send me that and I'll send it out to everybody. So everybody knows you need 12 credits all together, right? Six core, six elective. And out of those six core, there's three that are fair housing and ethics, okay? So that takes care of three of your core also just so you know. So once you have those satisfied, you need three, four, and six elective. Yeah. So that's great to know. And yes, maybe because of the celebration they're doing because it's 54 years, as yesterday was the anniversary of Fair Housing, okay? So the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination in the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, familiar status and disability. The act has two main purposes, prevent discrimination and reverse housing segregation. So again, that's when it started in 1960. I believe the original was 1965, but it came into practice in 1968 officially. And so it's just something great to remember um, because there are, it is, I'm telling you, it's more important than ever to fail, fire, to, um, to uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? to abide by the fair housing rules, okay? They're really more stringent than ever before. So just make sure you're aware of that. Yes, New Jersey is, New Jersey is. So Wiker, I don't know if you received this email yesterday, but I thought it was really a great idea and I'd love for some of us to participate. They're gonna be doing a scavenger hunt Wednesday, April 27th. So um, we're asking for, they're asking for people to put together teams in their office of six to 10 people. And we're going to be locating different things. So you either come here while well, we'll, we're here, so we, we don't have to worry, or they can do it virtually if they can't make it to our corporate office or in the office. I'm not, I don't know the, all the details. I believe it's going to be in here. I don't believe you're getting in a car and driving anywhere. So it's going to be on the campus. And the team who wins wins $500. For their office and then there's other prizes too of 250 but i think it's a fun i think it's a fun idea i already know who's going to do it in our office i can already tell you who's going to participate and who's not eric's in kelly's in vin's in i already know <laughs> marissa's in maybe 
She'll see what Dante's doing. <laughs> Deb's in, <laughs> right? I already know, I already know. So we're gonna pull Thomas in because he doesn't know any better in Alexandria. <laughs> They'll just listen to anything we say at this point. So um, just again, they're trying to do things to be, to get the community back, to get culture back, to get people working together again and back in the office. So it's just ways of them helping uh, helping each office and the and our Riker community um, get more engaged again. So I'm going to put this out there. Let me know if you're interested. So as I would definitely like to register as a team. So um, here's some of the uh, yes, mm -hmm. six to ten people from your company, department, or sales office. Um, Company of and sales offices are encouraged to come into the office to play in person. Teams will compete online in a shared virtual game. So we'll be, we'll be competing against other, obviously, uh, offices. And they'll, uh, obviously, it'll be virtual as we're doing things. So we'll be able to see what they're doing. But we'll be live in our office together, if that makes sense to you. On Wednesday, April 27th at 3 p.m., registered company and sales office teams are encouraged to come into their offices. Oh, I just said that. Once assembled, all teams will log in via the scavenger hunt challenge link, which will be provided after registering. Teams will hunt for Wakert and other work-related items in and around their offices or homes and uh, answer Wakert trivia questions. As items are found, the team leader will either take a picture or bring them back to the game screen to show the judge. The five teams with the most items found in the end will win. So I think that sounds like a lot of fun. I think we have a lot of fun when we're together. So if you're interested, like I said, just send me a text or an email. Um, so this way I can get us registered. Do you need stuff? I don't think so, no. Yes. We're not gonna know until. So just bring it in, <laughs> bring in the box. I have Jimmy dollars, I have Jimmy dollars. <laughs> Everybody remember Jimmy Dollars, Jimmy Bucks? Yep, it's a, it's a, it's a counterfeit <laughs> hundred dollars or thousand dollars, I don't even know, with Jim Bikert's face in the middle instead of a president. And they used to give that out when they used to do a lot of uh, promotional things with the agents. Yep, you have to collect money. Um, the next MTS workshop, the regional one is Thursday, April 28th, 9 a.m. and one o'clock. So the 9 a.m. one is now gonna be advanced and the 10, 1, one o'clock one is gonna be basics. So it's two different ones based on your knowledge and you know how advanced you are with the MyWaker system. Um, and then week five of MyWaker training will be Monday, April 25th at one o'clock. And the topics are creating a free Google business page. Everybody should have a Google business page. That's where people are searching online right now is Google business pages. I hear that more and more from agents. Create a listing presentation and using playbooks to promote your listing. Okay, so this is a really, really good session. Everybody should attend this and know all of those things I just mentioned. And then this coming Monday, April 18th at one o'clock using forms online. Okay, so like we said, we're going to be doing um, every other week, there's going to be a uh, training for, you know, things that we do on a daily basis in real estate, followed by the following week with the My Wiker training for our office, okay? So this is something new that they, um, well, actually, they've done this a while, and Joe brings it up all the time because the Westfield office actually put this together um, back when um we had long lines which you know sometimes we still do while you wait and this is something that you, that goes out to the people waiting in line or people that come into your open house it has your qr code on it these are already done they're in the worker design center everybody should have them at their open houses because you can print them out here so while you wait did you know that the current real estate market is equally favor favorable to both home buyers and sellers Buyers have more purchasing power than any other time in recent history, thanks to record low interest rates, which they are still record low. I know they've gone up, but they're still record low compared to other times in, in, in history. And sellers benefit because of the low housing inventory and unusually high demand. So your information's on it and the QR code, get an instant home evaluation, find out um, why it's an opportune time for homeowners to hang a for sale sign, so, and then it has your QR code. So this is something that should be going out to everybody, especially if you have multiple people at an open house and there's a line while people are waiting, they can then scan your QR code on their phone and get more information. That's exactly what we wanna do, drive everybody to your websites. It's the best way to drive people to your websites. That QR code should be on everything. 
So see Laura, she can help you out with these. And then also sold yard signs now available at Farmer Signs. So this is for when you are representing the buyer. Okay, obviously, if you're representing the seller, your, your sign is already on the front lawn, right? And if you ask the buyer, if you were fortunate enough to have both sides, you can slip your sold sign rider up there, you know, for two weeks, because um, you could keep it a uh, sold sign up for two weeks after the home sells, okay? So this is something we can put together. It's all one piece. And if you represent the buyer, you say, can, do, would you mind me putting up this for sale sign or the sold sign in your front yard? Most likely they're not gonna mind because you had a great relationship with them. And for two weeks, it stays up there. And then the neighborhood knows who actually sold that property, right? Because the last sign they saw was Coa Banker or Keller Williams. They just assume that they were brought the buyers there. They don't know, it's all perception in our area, right? So this is something that um, they put at, they have available um, for, our, for our agents when you're representing the buyer side with that and we're going for two weeks. So everybody now is going by and seeing, oh, Peter Lee sold this house, you know? They could see exactly who sold the house, not who listed the house. That's the difference. So again, taking the most advantage of marketing in this in this um, in this environment because we want other people who are thinking about selling to give us a call. That's the whole benefit of it. Someone else in that neighborhood who was thinking of selling now sees your sold sign. You have a better opportunity of getting that call, right? Versus your clients move in, nobody knows what's going on, and you don't you don't get that opportunity. So I did my office training and events, and these are our um, absorption rates. You know, we've already went over absorption rates, but these are more localized absorption rates for you guys. If you needed to share it with your clients, it's very good information, um, you know, and how many days on the market, which here I feel like we really can't tell uh, specifically. So anyway, office listings. Lori Kaplan has a new exclusive listing, 129 Fairview Avenue in Booton for 625. So again, this isn't on the market yet. If you have someone looking in Booton at this price point, you now have an opportunity to call that buyer and tell them you, you know something coming on before it hits the market. That's the beauty of seeing these homes before. We don't have any new coming soon listings this week, um, but Lori also has 58A Indian Road in Denville, new listing. Bev Nichols, 11B, 2nd Ave in Roxbury Township. So this is a great story. So Bev represented these clients, I think it was four or five years ago in, in buying this house. Now they're being relocated. So I get an email from relocation that clients had specified they want Bev Nichols to help them in their sale. So that's the beauty of being in a company that has a big relocation company that we can then pass that on to Bev. Okay, regardless if she's reload certified or not, if that client wants to work with a certain agent, that's the agent they're going to get because they give that client um, white glove service and that client gets to do. So Bev actually partnered with Terry Dearness on this. And so they just listed this home in um, Roxbury Township. It's in the Kenville area. Again, it's a few years old. Um, really nice condition and on for 549.9. Eric, I know you announced this this last week. I don't know if there's if you want to announce it again because I think last week it was exclusive and now or coming soon and now it's uh, actually active on the market. It is, so it was exclusive last week for sale on Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So it's in Mars Plains off 202 off Speedwell Avenue. It's not under contract. No, 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 it's still available. Yeah. So just wanted to ask you guys, as we end the meeting, um, real quickly, why don't you share your tips? In today's markets, buyers are getting frustrated and anxious about the process. What tools or dialogues is anyone using here to put them at ease and create a memorable experience for them? Is anybody doing anything different, thinking outside the box in order to help their buyer um, get the home. Yes. Uh, I'm putting it at ease. So I am not to worry about it. Wait. Um, so I'm not like, I'm not pushing. I'm just, I cry a lot more time. Yeah, yeah. It's like either they, either they are in it to win it or they're not. They make the decision, right? Yeah. I mean, 
mean, they. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And that's huge for them yeah. to be part of the the um, transaction versus you're on one side and they're on the other side with their, whoever they have. Yeah, actually, Vin sent me a great um, email um, a few weeks ago that he received with an offer on his listing. And he's like, this is, it, it was really put together really, really well. Um, and I've since sent it out to agents when they called me and said, I'm presenting an offer. Can you help me with a letter? And I just sent that out. And both, I sent it out to two people and both agents got, reached out to me afterwards and said, I got, the agent called me back and said, that was amazing what you sent. So I'll share that with you. I'll have to wipe out all the information, you know, the personal information of the transaction, but really, really well put together letter. And that goes a long way. We talk about this all the time. Those, those buyers agents who have conversations with the listing agent versus just sending over an offer and not even following up to see if the agent got it, that those agents who put together a and this reason why we're doing forms online on Monday is because we see a lot of, of contracts that come through that are not complete. And I'm telling you, you get an agent like Catherine Adcock, you get an agent like Lani, right? You get an agent like Ben who's been in the business and they get a half complete contract in their hand. They're going to be like next automatically in their mind. They're like next, it could be the best offer. It could be the best terms be everything. But if that agent can, can't even fill out a contract, all together, it's it, all these things are huge in your in the seller making a decision and the listing agent assisting that seller making a decision, whether it's your contract or somebody else's. Mm -hmm. So don't overestimate doing things properly and taking the taking a little bit more time to make sure everything's complete and done properly. I don't know. I don't remember whether she used a listing mm -hmm. contract for sale or sale contract for the listing. Mm -hmm. She did not use the, the property. Right uh -huh. uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's right. That's a red flag right there. I mean, a huge red flag. A hundred percent. That I'm telling you, that is key. They walk the neighborhood and they go, oh, I'm really into this house. And then just kind of walk the neighborhood and it happens. The guy happens. You know, so they make that connection. And it really does. People want to. Stalking works. Yes. Stalking and gifts. Stalking and gifts. Yeah. Somebody told me the other day that. Gosh, I don't know. I think it was on, actually, I think it was on the same listing that um, Joanne Vickers won last week. 
that another agent said that they put their client put an offer. I think they added like Red Sox tickets, they told me. I swear on my life. Yes. People are doing all kinds of things right now. I've heard timeshares, vacation homes. Yeah. Everything's negotiable, right? The, the, the tagline used to be when it, when it was a buyer's market in a seller's house, everything's negotiable. What do you want? As long as you buy in this house, we'll, we'll give away anything. I forgot about that, but yes, that's the truth. That's the truth. But yeah, so um, filling out your contracts completely, making sure you include the seller's disclosure of the lead paint, taking it off the MLS, putting it into your DocuSign, and making sure that it's one complete file. Let them see everything. Don't wait and say, well, I'm not going to do that now until I get it. No, it all has to be there. And then a beautiful written um from email with all the terms and conditions that your client is willing to do and making sure you're waiving appraisal for 50,000 or 100,000, you better show proof of funds. Like having it all there. Don't wait for them to ask you for this stuff. Like make sure you're taking the time to put this together in one, like she said, one PDF. I've helped many, many agents in this office within the last few months. And when I'm the one collecting the offers, and there's four PDFs on top. And I can't remember which one I printed. I just print that one. I can't remember if I did that. It's so frustrating. And it's so easy in DocuSign to put everything you want in one email and then just forward it right over. I forgot. All right, we'll think about it a second. Ashley, come up here one second before we end. Everybody know Ashley? She's our title girl. She's one of our title girls. <laughs> Ashley and Megan. So if you haven't met her yet, um, uh, no. most of you know, yes, there's probably two people you haven't met here. I can, that's, that's about it. Um, but anyway, so she assists with title, you know, um, it's our support of attorneys that usually choose which title company they're going to use on behalf of the buyers because title is obviously the support. Most of you know, I should say not obviously the same price throughout the state of New Jersey. So it's not something someone has to shop for in, in, in as far as pricing goes or anything, you just want to make sure you're getting the best title company behind you because you want to make sure you get to closing. That's our goal in life. Get to closing. It's a state right? regulated mm -hmm. fee. So it can't change from Bob's title company across the street to Wager Title. Title insurance is a state regulated fee. It's a percentage based off of the purchase price and the mortgage amount. So there's an owner's policy and there's a lender's policy. And it's literally just a percentage that the state has created, and it's based off of both of those numbers. If there's no mortgage, there's just an owner's <coughs> policy, and it's just that percentage based off of whatever the purchase price is. Say that again? It, it varies per county, per town. That's the, that's yeah, the realty the transfer fee. You're confusing yeah. title with the realty transfer fee. Yeah. Realty transfer fee is something that Governor Corzine imposed on all of us, all of us homeowners when he was in office, and they take a fee when we close on our property. So remember that you share that with your clients so they know what their proceeds are going to be. That's something you should know. But title is something totally different. Title protects the buyer from purchasing a property with any liens or judgments on it. That's what title policy is. Right. Yep. In the simplest form. Very simple. Yep. Yes. And yeah. the um, it's always been a benefit that Jim has had that no one else really has, especially around us around here. But now in this market, it's huge that I'm seeing a lot of agents actually be able to use with their clients because we're seeing I don't want to call them more fall throughs, but we're seeing more make an offer, get it accepted. They go home, they sleep on it, and they're like wow, I just won that house, but I'm paying $100,000 more than I planned on. I really don't want it anymore. Let me back out. Even though um, they're backing out, if title was ordered, which now buyer's attorneys used to wait until home inspection to order title. That was just the name of the game. No one waits until home inspection to order title because there's too many things that are moving too quickly. Appraisals are being waived. Home inspections are being waived sometimes. So there's too many pieces that have moved. So they want to order title right away, make sure that that's cleared and kind of just put it on the back burner, check it off, move on to the next things. If we're going to have a quick closing, if they're skipping things. So we don't charge for a cancellation fee. 
So let me just say that one time. It's $425 for a county to do a title search on the property. If you send your contract to, you know, Bob Smith, the attorney, and you get an attorney review and he orders title right away, which is now what they're doing, and that person says, I'm going to back out, $425 is what they have to pay because they did the county title search. Jim Weicker, because he's such a large entity, decided to eat that fee, and we don't charge for a cancellation. So is that in writing? You know, is that in writing? Yeah. Have you have an email? Did you get it? I I can't forward it to you, but you can talk about it, and then when we order it, there's no fee. It's always been that way. It's always, it's been, always been that way. Yeah, you don't yeah. need any writing to tell them. Yeah. Yeah. So. And if they charged you, you come to me and I'll make sure it's taken care of. But they, I never had that problem. Yeah, they won't. They won't. I've never had that problem. I've been here for 11 years. If you want to do like a title search on sellers, yep. Yeah. So if you want to do what he's referring to is like just like a search for a listing that you're taking to make sure that there's nothing that's coming up. If you know maybe it's an estate or something like that, we can do that. It's $250 instead of $425. To the client, um, Jim cuts a discount, but because we're not going to get the title insurance on it because it's a list side, we charge something, but instead of 425, it's 250. So we can always do those searches for you on the list side if that's something that your client's looking for to help you out. But I'm seeing a lot of our agents use that as listen, I know you want to use Missy for your attorney. I don't know, Missy, you know, if that's what you want to do, it is what it is, but. Just make sure to use Wiker for your closing so that I can keep my arms around it and I can make sure that everything goes smoothly because I have a contact at Wiker. And in this day and age, we want to make sure that the smoothing, you know, the smoothness of everything is key. So we can order title even though it's not Jamie McMahon or Angelo, or we can order with anybody. And then they can order right away and they're not charged if they go on to another property. Catherine. <laughs> uh, if your client is okay with it or your attorney, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't that be like a shoe? Yeah. Well, especially because goes, there's a, then it goes to the attorney. Especially because there's no order title. Right. There's no fee. You can certainly do that because it God forbid. Very something smart happens. question. Very I'm smart question. Thinking. I have two or three uh, agents that actually do that. No, I have two yeah. for the uh, Sorry. Because they're being paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. there's number one reason. Number one reason. Yeah, it's normally the only reason. So a mm -hmm. lot of times outside lenders get paid from having partnerships with, you know, title companies, with home inspection companies, with this, with that. So use my title company when that transaction closes, they get a hundred bucks, 200 bucks on the side from my closing. And their fees will always be less because they're deducting it off of the lending side. It's not actually being deducted off of the title side, even though they tell you it is because they're being paid out from it, which is illegal. I'm sure mm -hmm. everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. It's very illegal. And they changed the laws because it's happening more now. It used to be that they would get in trouble. You wouldn't. Now it's you both get in trouble. It's a fine. It's jail time. It's a huge thing because there's been there's been so many of that going on that they legally changed it and now even if you didn't know you you can still get penalized and your life fees and all that stuff so the, the listing uh yeah that uh it can be yep and we make it easy. They just do PayPal, I closing, whatever. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, whatever you do, don't use Missy as your attorney. That's all I'm going to suggest. <laughs> do not. Uh, I draw the line for legal advice all the time. But um, thank you, Ashley. Yes, of course. And any question, email, call, text, whatever. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, guys, anybody have anything else they want to add? They forgot? Okay. Woohoo!
That's a celebration right there. Um, So you're saying it's not available? So the, um, they didn't have an open house there and didn't have shown it. But it happened that they showed it to me. I don't know what happened. So it's not the MLS, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it coming soon? Is it coming soon? It wasn't coming soon. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 No, oh, coming soon is a delayed showing. It's same thing. No showing. No, not no, even the seller can show up. No, no, no. So count your blessings, Patty Gito. That's yeah. all I can say. Count your blessings. And don't, count and don't tell anybody else. Yeah. Keep that in here. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not going to say anything because we're happy for you. <laughs> yeah. You would not get in trouble because you didn't do it. He would get in trouble. He allowed you in. Yeah, you wouldn't get in trouble. If you did it, you put on a coming suit then because you thought it was okay because of why he did it. Yeah, kind of after where she should have known it's the shape though. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I, I, I feel like it would be hard for us to get the agent, the listing agent in trouble in our environment. So Patty, I feel like it's, it's <laughs> Patty. It's, yeah. talking to a, um, uh, I don't know if it was another agent, I believe it was, but he was, he was quite annoying. Anyway, he said, she said, he said, will you accept a blind offer? And in my mind, I'm going, what the hell is a blind offer? I've never heard of a blind offer before. And it, the blind offer was if your client was not seeing the house. So him going back to his client because they're not in the area and saying, this is, I think this would be a great investment because this was an investor's property. This was clearly had structural issues and all this stuff, right? So it was an investment property. But clearly he said to her, and she said, absolutely not. 
I would never ever uh, advise my sellers to take a blind offer. And this is what she knew exactly what I was talking about. Thank goodness. And she goes, she goes, because you need to come into a house, especially like this, you need to see the different rooms. You need to see the room sizes. You need to smell like there's a whole thing that you need to do. And I would never ask that. And I would never advise my clients ever to accept a blind offer. And in this case, basically what Patty did, I mean, even though she was showing them around in the video, right? So they were there, they weren't there. Like you said, to smell, to see the stain on the seal. Like there's things you don't see or hear. So that was really like, a, that was a double whammy that she got that. Uh, in there and got that offer accepted. So I made that mistake. Um, you were just saying the woman, the, at least the guy asked the question. I didn't ask the question. I told my client, as a listing agent, I'd never sell a blind, I'd never show my client a blind offer. I mean, I'll show it to them, but they're not going to accept it until you get in the house. But as a listing, my former buyer, guess what? The listing agent sold it as a blind offer to somebody without it. And so, like, I, I from now on will always ask, do you accept my doctor? So I will never make that mistake. Mm -hmm. It's worth having a conversation. Some will, and some I don't know. But I, I always, and it's too bad. What is the counseling is free of this kind of investor? I bet it wasn't mine. They had an investor, they bought a buyer, um, and then the realtor did not bring him. Right, right. The investor wants to buy this. All right. Yeah, so actually, Peter, Peter, uh, Peter and Brenda called me last week. And they received multiple offers on a home. And the, the funny part about this is that Brenda's very diligent. And she was like, I looked through my open house sheets. I looked through my showing time, my showings. I've never seen this agent show this house. So, and, and the client's name was not on the open house sheet. So she knew that this client didn't come through. So she said to them, when, you know, I, I said to her, just say, Oh, when did you when did your client see the house? Like make it a friendly thing. Don't start like accusing people or whatever. And that's when she said, Oh, they didn't see it. And luckily they didn't accept the offer because I think by the next day, they, even though they didn't accept the offer, they backed out with it without before she even you know made the, the seller made a choice on it. So again, then that happened with another agent here who was selling a house. They didn't know that the that the clients didn't come, the agents came, the agent came through, but the clients didn't. They bought it, or they, they were the highest offer. She accepted it. Then at the next day, when they backed out, then they never saw it and they got their feet. So be careful because that's happening more and more because the market is moving at such a high rate of, uh, rate of speed that people are just making these crash decisions because they can't get in because, you know, things are like we said, going on Friday, highest the best by 12 o'clock. God forbid you're away for the weekend, you miss going into that house. And they're, you know, maybe they like the location, maybe they're desperate, who knows, and they're just putting offers in. So make sure you ask, oh, you know, when 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 did when did you, did you find see the house or when did you come in? Or just ask them that question and let them answer because most people will tell you, oh, they didn't. They don't even realize, and you know, then you know. So blind offer is the new term that I didn't know about until hmm? I think in different markets, though, it's different. I think in Florida, more people, someone else from our office just bought a house in Florida they didn't see until their husband flew down to, for the home inspection three, a week later. So I, I think it, that's a different market. And there, there are more absentees. There, there are absentee buyers, I would say, who aren't there. They have someone on their behalf. They know what area they're looking at. They know what price point they're doing. Here, we're not in an absentee buyer market. People need to get into our houses. Like these are people's long-term houses, not a second home or, you know. Yeah, so I think that's the difference. Ben, did you want to say something? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even ask that. Any other listings coming on? Sorry. Yeah. 
Yep, it's gonna go quick. <laughs> oh, sorry, you weren't listening. <laughs> oh, 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 I was gonna say you know about it. Oh my God, I didn't realize that. That's amazing. The problem is it doesn't Except for I'm just saying. That the Claridge house where Michael has that place in Montclair, that's like a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, it includes property, it also includes valet parking and people bringing stuff up to your, your room and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, uh, uh, so I learned the right way. What he did is wrong. Well, if it, it, coming soon, nobody can uh, show. Nobody can show coming soon. Um, 